when I started to look at Bitcoin in terms of game theory, that was when I got that, I guess I crossed the event horizon of the Bitcoin rabbit hole. I was like, oh, wow, there's really no stopping this thing because mm-hmm. it's just, it, it, it's serving individual self-interest in a way that nothing else does. Therefore, every individual that touches it will ultimately adopt it. Right. And so I've, I've, I've tried to describe that phenomenon as like a, a vortex of positive incentives that no one knows how to turn off. Um, you're obviously focusing here on the game theory of taxation. How does Bitcoin impact the game theory of taxation? So net producers for society, they don't want to be taxed, right? They're going to do whatever they can. They're going to hire, you know, sort of the best tax attorneys, go to the most stable political jurisdiction where they have the least amount of their wealth confiscated, right? Because Mm -hmm. wealth is, it's better in the hands of the private individuals and and businesses than it is in the hands of government. I mean, all you got to do is go look at the DMV or Mm -hmm. compare, you know, the U.S. Postal Service to Amazon or FedEx, right? The free market does things better. And so rational net producers are going to go where they're, they're treated best, where they're not having their wealth taken through taxation. And so Bitcoin is unique because it's wealth that isn't restricted by borders. Like we said before, a lot of, you know, the function of money has been divided, right? And so people save in assets. And if a large chunk of your savings is Miami Beach real estate, that's, that doesn't alter the game theory of taxation because you can't take that with you somewhere else, right? Mm. You are, in a way, you're, you're cucked to Miami Beach. You're cucked to Florida. You're cucked to the United States. You, your wealth is there and there's nothing you can do about it, right? But Bitcoin, you can store it literally in your head. You can have 12 or 24 words and you can take it anywhere. So you can go to the place where you're going to be treated well as a Bitcoiner and as an entrepreneur. I mean, we've seen this on a microscopic scale with El Salvador, right? And in the grand scheme of things, like, it's cool what they're doing, and I respect it, but they're just a drop in the bucket in terms of global economic production. But they are incentivizing Bitcoiners and, and other entrepreneurs to go there, right? Because they're they're defending property rights by arresting criminals and by embracing Bitcoin. And so you're getting entrepreneurs going there that otherwise wouldn't, right? It was the murder capital of the world. It was not going to ever really be any sort of economic powerhouse in that in those conditions, right? But now they're actually drawing people in. And so how the game theory of that works is you know, I'm Honduras or I'm Guatemala or I'm Brazil. I'm another, you know, smaller country down there. I see what's going on. I'm like, well, you know, El Salvador is really benefiting from this. Like I should do this. Right. Mm -hmm. And this isn't theoretical or hypothetical. We're actually finally really seeing it play out now. In 2024, we've seen President Donald Trump really promote Bitcoin. He went to the Bitcoin conference. He's saying, I want all the Bitcoins to be mined in America. And last week we saw the we saw Russia legalize Bitcoin mining, right? We're seeing even China turn their tune and they banned Bitcoin mining in 2021, right? And so they're not, they they're looking at what the United States is doing and they're like, mm. well, we want in on that. We want to benefit from that too. And so you're seeing all these dominoes really start to fall. And even within the United States, you can see that there's competition, right, between the various states on who is the most pro Bitcoin. Is it Florida? Is it Texas? Is it Wyoming, North Carolina, Tennessee, right? certain, you know, savvy politicians that are are seeing where this is going, they're adopting pro Bitcoin legislation. They're saying, hey, Bitcoiners, Bitcoin companies come here, like we'll treat you well. Miners come here. And so that's how game theory and, and taxation is really playing out in, in the Bitcoin domain. So the the voting with your feet that we talked about earlier, mm-hmm. it sounds like Bitcoin makes that vote much more effective because you can actually relocate to the jurisdiction where you're treated best with all of your purchasing right. power intact. It, it reduces a lot of that friction. Yeah. In, in 2020, we saw a lot of businesses and individuals go from California to Florida and to Tennessee, right? Mm. And it's not easy to up and move your whole business if you have you know 100 employees and a headquarters mm. to move it across the country. That's a tall task, and that's why not everyone does it, and they just stay in California getting taxed and like, mm. oh, well, so be it. Like, this is just how it is, right? But when your wealth is in Bitcoin... You can do that with zero friction. You can go across borders and there's there's no leakage. And and so that is, it just opens up, you know, a world of possibilities for for individuals, right? Mm. Yeah. So then that vote that you're casting with the way you save and spend your money, you also there's a this voting with your feet thing also gets increased or improved mm-hmm. by virtue of having your savings in Bitcoin. Right. You basically have purchasing power in a hyper portable, unseizable 
asset. Right. And that gives you a lot more options in terms of where you move yourself and your business and your capital. Right. And wow, like I don't think people really appreciate that. No, they they definitely don't. I mean, there's so many, so many things that that Bitcoin does where it changes incentives and and how people can actually act now that you have a money that satisfies all three functions and it can't be taken from you. Mm -hmm. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, click here to find more just like it and here to find our most recent episode. Also, make sure to like this video to help shine light on the corruption of money. And be sure to subscribe to this channel to stay connected.